coming up on Hashtag That. We're back with the latest Hollywood news updates. We have some Coachella reviews, the latest Stranger Things update, and a review of Fantastic Beasts. All that and more from Hamden to Hollywood. We're your source for Quinnipiac's entertainment news. Welcome back to Hashtag That. I'm Isabella Foley. And I'm Krista Barong. It's a roomy takeover here at the desk. Now let's dive into some new Hollywood scoop. I don't know about you, Krista, but I could hardly contain myself when the new Stranger Things 4 trailer came out last week. Fans have been waiting almost three long years for the return of the hit Netflix series. The first official trailer for season four, a glorious three minutes and 15 seconds long, included a deep look into the ever-changing world of Hawkins and some new locations too. The gang of Demogorgon fighting kids are back, but they all look a little bit older, and there are some new faces as well. The most shocking part of the trailer was the brand new monster at the end, speculated to be Billy Hargrove, who, spoiler alert, died in the third season of the show. Fans have jumped to theories about Eleven's backstory, Hopper's kidnapping, and the clock that has made a major appearance in the trailer. I, for one, am on the edge of my seat waiting until May 27 for the first volume of season four. In other news, everyone's favorite doctor, Benedict Cumberbatch, is returning to host SNL on May 7th in preparation for the release of the new Doctor Strange film coming out that same weekend. He made his debut on SNL in 2016, but now he will be back with musical guest Arcade Fire. Fans are always excited to see MCU stars in the comedic realm, so they hope to see him in sketches that involve the film. I can't wait to see what he brings as a host. After years of receiving hate and criticism, Hailey Bieber has finally called out her internet trolls. On April 12th, the model took to TikTok to express her concerns, stating, quote, I'm minding my business. I didn't do anything. I don't say anything. Leave me alone, please, end quote. Although it is unclear what Hailey Bieber is specifically calling trolls out for, there is speculation it might have to do with her husband's past relationship with singer Selena Gomez that continues to have a very strong fan base. Some fans seem to still have their eyes out for Selena, but I, for one, am very proud of the model for putting those trolls in their place. There has been a new addition to the Hollywood Walk of Fame. DJ Khaled has been added as the 2719th star. The DJ and producer was supported by his family and other stars, such as Jay-Z, Diddy, and Fat Joe. During his acceptance speech, he stated, quote, There's only one Khaled. That's all I gotta say. We the best. It's not just me, it's we, end quote. All I can say is congratulations, and I'm sure we are all excited to see what he does next. My fellow co-host and Manny Galicki ventured to the theater for the premiere of the new Fantastic Beasts movie. Let's see what they thought. actually went to go see the movie. Let's go check it out. Hey, Hashtag. We are here at the premiere of Fantastic Beasts, it's The Secrets of Dumbledore, and we are so excited to get in there. Krista, what are you most excited to see? You know, after like the last movie came out years ago, I'm just so excited to see what's going to come up next. And what about you? I am just excited because I'm on this Harry Potter high right now. Mm. I have just watched all of the movies from start to finish like in the past like month or so. Oh so I am so excited to get into this. After seeing the movie, I have to say, I am not 
thoroughly impressed. It was super anticlimactic. It was an extremely well done standalone movie. Nothing has really happened and nothing has been set up to keep happening. One thing I really did enjoy about this movie was getting to know more about Albus Dumbledore and his relationship with Grindelwald. It was nice to go back and see like how their relationship started, how their bond is, and how it's going to continue to break. I definitely have a few questions after watching the movie too. Like, Jacob Kowalski is a muggle who was given a wand. I'm just confused because that's never something that's been touched on. It's never something we've seen before and they like didn't really address the fact that this was so abnormal. So I will say, the saving grace of the movie was the crab walking scene. If you know, you know. Newt and his brother Theseus, they got the crab walk down. They know exactly what they're doing. They knew how to move those hips. That part like really just had both Manny and I cracking up the entire time. Overall, it was pretty good. I definitely recommend it. And we will be right back after this short commercial break. Stay tuned. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a unique mix of all kinds of things. Come on, Jules, spot on this last one. Uh, there it is. Keep going with it. Leo! <laughs> they're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Thanks for sticking with us. Q30's entertainment director, Karina Kamin, knows her fair share of pop culture. Today, she's breaking down a major pop culture moment from the past. Hi, hashtag, I'm Karina, and this is Pop Culture History, where I try to break down major pop culture events in just two minutes. Today we're starting with YouTube, drama get in one, so let's get two minutes on the clock. I'm gonna have my two minutes down here, but you'll be able to see it on the screen. Cutie YouTubers, Jeffree Star, Nikita Dragon, Laura Lee, and Manny MUA were largely friends pre-2017. Even in the beginning of 2017, they appeared heavily in a lot of each other's videos, so people obviously were interested in their friendship, were really invested in it, until the latter half of 2017, when it seemed like Jeffree Star was no longer appearing in videos with the trio. Um, instead, it was Gabriel Zamora, who's another beauty makeup artist. So it seemed like their friendship was beginning to deteriorate, which was confirmed in November 2017, when Star tweeted out that Laura Lee soul was pure evil. Uh, confirming the end of the friendship for a lot of people. He also said some other choice words about specifically Manny MUA, but mainly Laura Lee. Months later, Shane Dawson, the YouTube golden boy at the time, releases his very first docuseries on Jeffree Star entitled The Secret World of Jeffree Star, where he kind of alludes to the feud that he's always made out to be the bad guy in all of his friendships and nobody knows what actually went on and even his friends are telling the wrong side of the story. A lot. August 2018, Gabriel Zamora sends out a tweet that he is now sure to regret which is features the four of them, Gabri Gabriel Zamora, Manny MUA, Laura Lee, and Nikita Dragon, holding up the middle finger with the caption, B is bitter because we're doing better without him. And boy, did people not like that. <laughs> Star Wars fans quickly came to his defense because they knew it was about him, to which Gabriel Zamora sent out another tweet that I'm sure he's going to regret now that just said, imagine standing a racist, I could never. To which all of the fans of everybody came out with just every old tweet possible every tweet every instance of any of the five of those people being sexist racist anything and it was out there that now gets us laura lee's famous apology video which set the tone for youtube apology videos for years to come jeffree star video just entitled racism gabriel zamora's video just entitled my truth where he tried to expose jeffree star but it didn't really work in his favor very well 
and this set the tone for how drama will be covered on YouTube for years to come and is still the standard for today. That is all the time I have for today for Pop Culture History. I'm Karina Kamey. Make sure you tune back in next week and we'll see you at the desk. Manny Galicki has the latest news on what's happening in the reality TV world with hashtag Let's Get Real. Take it away, Manny. Hey, hashtag, it's Manny, and I'm here this week with a hashtag Let's Get Real. From the Kardashians to Bachelor Clayton, I have a lot to cover, so let's jump right in. The new Kardashian spinoff, titled The Kardashians, premiered on Hulu this Thursday. The famous family has stepped away from the reality TV spotlight for the past nine months when their original show, Keeping Up With The Kardashians, ended. The new series teased a ton of drama that fans have been waiting to get the inside scoop on. From Kim and Pete's budding relationship to the back and forth of Chloe and Tristan Thompson, we have a lot to look forward to. This season seems to be focusing more on the family aspect of their lives and how the girls are navigating their new level of fame, and I cannot wait to see how this all plays out, Bible. Switching directions to my personal favorite reality show, the longtime CBS hit Survivor is ramping up to be one of the best seasons yet. With the long-awaited Merge episode airing on Wednesday, the season is taking a more dramatic turn than most fans were expecting. A new twist has been added to Merge episodes, allowing a player who has been exiled by the cast to secretly make a decision that reverses the outcome of a challenge. Fans were questionable about the twist when it first aired, but it seems like this season might be making them change their minds. The cast is outstanding, the gameplay is fast-paced, and I'm thoroughly enjoying this season, so if you aren't caught up, you're missing out. And from the last first time in nearly two years, there is not a Bachelor franchise season airing right now. But have no fear, Bachelor contestants are still finding themselves in the spotlight. After a recent string of TikToks went viral, previous Bachelor Clayton Eckerd found himself in the center of a web of cheating rumors. A girl on TikTok claimed that she spent the night with Clayton in NYC and he forced her to keep quiet as to not ruin his relationship with girlfriend Susie. Clayton learned of this and shared his thread of receipts to TikTok proving that he was not unfaithful to his girlfriend and pleading again to others to keep his relationship out of the spotlight. Clayton came out on top of this one, but his only time will tell for another Bachelor scandal to happen. And that's all I have time for this week. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this short commercial break. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just going to drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh, man. The selfies. <laughs> selfies. Nailed it. Yeah warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. Why? I can't drive. Why? Why? My... Grace Doyle here today to give us the Hollywood News Update. What do you have for us today, Grace? Hey, Hashtag. I'm Grace Doyle, and I'm here with this week's Hollywood News Update. This week in Hollywood has been all about the baby mama drama. Earlier this week, it was speculated that ASAP Rocky was cheating on current girlfriend Rihanna. These rumors caused waves on the internet, as Rihanna is currently pregnant with Rocky's child. The allegations have since been denied by those close to the couple, including designer Amita Muadi, who was the one said to be involved with ASAP. How did you guys react when hearing this news? Do you think there could be any truth to this situation? I was so shocked when hearing this news. I think people nowadays will just make up anything to get attention, but I was so sad to hear because a baby is on the way, ASAP Rocky and Rihanna are such a beloved couple. I was really sad to hear, and I'm really hoping there's no truth to the situation. What do you think, Krista? I totally agree. I feel that 
there are too many rumors going around in Hollywood and That's it's right. really breaking up relationships and it's really devastating to see how these couples have to navigate through the fame and then through all these cheating rumors, especially with Rihanna and ASAP Rocky, like you said, with the baby on the way. Thankfully, I think the couple is doing everything that they can to try and escape these rumors. Mm -hmm. They're currently in Barbados. So I think that they're doing the best they can in dealing with everything that's going on in the situation. And hopefully these rumors are not true. I don't believe they are, but Grace, uh, what's your opinion on the matter? Personally, I love both of the artists. So hearing these rumors had me absolutely devastated, but I was relieved to hear that they were denied. And it, it does, as Krista mentioned, it does seem as the couple is completely happy. They're spending time together in Barbados. So I am completely relieved at that. Hey, speaking of pregnancies, Britney Spears has announced that she is pregnant with her third child. The 40-year-old singer announced to Instagram that after a trip to Maui with her fiancé, Sam Ashgari, she found out that she would be having another child. This announcement comes months after the end of her 13-year conservatorship, in which she was forced to keep an IUD in place, even though she wanted to have another baby. What do you guys think of this exciting news? Any guesses on what we can expect to see on Britney's pregnancy journey? I am so happy for Britney Spears being able to have the opportunity to be a mother yet again. Yep. After her conservatorship, uh, she, you know, she wasn't able to have access to her kids, the ones that she already has now, and they have had to grow up mostly without her. So mm -hmm. I feel horrible for her having to miss out on those motherly opportunities. But now that she's having a new baby, she'll be able to really get back into mother mode. And I'm so excited for her, and I hope she takes this journey and takes us along with her as you know everybody with the free Britney like we're all on her side so what's your opinion yeah definitely I couldn't agree more I'm so happy for her I can already tell from the tone of her Instagram posts mm -hmm. all over social media she's even calling Sam Ashgari her husband and they're technically only engaged right now I think she's just saying it out of love for her baby's father I couldn't be more happy for her and she's finally getting the chance she deserves to continue on with her family and do what she's always wanted to do so we're very happy for her here at hashtag what do you think about it Grace I completely agree. I have been following along with all of the conservatorship news and since the very beginning. So to hear that this uh, wish has been granted for Britney is very exciting news to us all. Finally, all of the rumors are not true. During her Saturday Night Live hosting debut, rumor singer Lizzo addressed many of the allegations surrounding her persona, which include allegations of her being pregnant with Marvel actor Chris Evans' child. During her monologue, she said, I have no idea where that one started. It could beat the TikTok where I said I am pregnant with Chris Evans' baby. It's called manifesting, okay? Did you guys watch the most recent SNL episode? And if so, what did you think about Lizzo as a host? I absolutely loved Lizzo as a host on SNL. She is so perfect for it. I watched every single sketch last night. I couldn't stop watching. I really loved her monologue, and I know you did too. What mm -hmm. did you think about how she opened the show? I mean, it was just iconic. I mean, she was just so funny. She really embodied the entire idea of being a host for SNL. Yeah. I also love that her mother was there to watch her take this opportunity, which is such a great accomplishment, especially for a celebrity to be on SNL. Definitely. What was your favorite uh, sketch that she was in? I gotta say one of my favorites was the Beanie Baby sketch. It was so hilarious. The best part about it was that she kind of broke character at the mm -hmm. end and started laughing. And for some reason, I just love when the cast also can't even keep character anymore. I think she did really awesome. The trivia game show sketches, all the different things really showed off her talent, even an orchestra one. Don't know if you saw that one where she plays the flute, which everybody knows and loves. So I thought she did an amazing job. What do you think, Grace? I agree. Unfortunately, I did not catch last week's episode. However, I do follow Lizzo on all of her social media platforms. And I can say she is just a natural comedian. And of course, all of her jokes with Chris Evans, he's in on them. And it's so funny. Well, that's all I have for this week's Hollywood News Update. We'll be back after this short commercial break. I know what you're thinking. I need a job. I need a new career. Well, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. I wasn't happy with what I was doing. After high school, I didn't have a plan. I just wanted to start working. I got laid off twice. But you gotta keep going. You just need the right skills. Find an apprenticeship. I found a two-year IT program. I found a medical course online. I'm now a consultant in the tech space. You have more options than you think. You can do this. You will find something. You will find something new. Maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes! Sorry. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, and flushing every toilet in a 20-mile radius. Home sweet home. 
you waste house hunter. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Honey, what I think you need is a socket wrench. I played JV basketball. I'm sorry. I don't think it looks right. This is good, and it's all is good, it, baby. Is it really all good? If you love me enough to routinely test your handyman skills, not to mention the strength of your marriage, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. I'm going to call my dad. Bella, I don't know about you, but I have definitely been struggling with figuring out what to watch lately. There's just so much. Thankfully for us, though, a few of our hashtaggers teamed up to share what they are currently watching. Let's hope they can convince me. Hey, hashtag, I'm Liz Bluto, and right now I'm currently binging The Girl from Plainville. It's a Hulu original that follows Michelle Carter's assistance in Conrad Roy's suicide in 2014 in Plainville, Massachusetts. Uh, it stars Elle Fanning and Colton Ryan. I love this show because I had never heard of this case before and I love a good true crime drama. Um, it has me excited for every episode coming out Wednesdays. And if you're looking for a good show to watch, you should definitely check it out. Hey, hashtag, it's Carly. And I'm here to talk about the show Good Sam that's coming out on network TV right now. And I love it so much. And it's the first show that I've watched on network TV in a really long time. So I'm very excited about watching new shows every week. Um, basically, Sophia Bush plays the main role of Sam on the show. And she's playing a doctor who has recently taken over as chief of surgery after her dad got in an accident. But now he's back and they're fighting for power. And I love the show so much. And Sophia is doing such a great job. And I've been really enjoying it. Hey, hashtag, it's Lane Dubin here. I just finished watching the show The Ultimatum, Marry or Move On on Netflix. It is a reality TV show that follows six couples on their journey to either, to either get married or move on by the end of the show. Um, it is very toxic, it is very bad. Netflix reality, love, TV. But I don't know what we expect from Netflix anymore. Um, it is entertaining and you see relationships blossom, but you also see them die. I definitely recommend the show. Hey, hashtag. So recently, I have been watching The Dropout, which is a mini series streaming on Hulu. It follows the rise and fall of Elizabeth Holmes, as well as her company Theranos that she founded herself. I think it's a really cool portrayal of a really recent event. I remember this happening in real time uh, and all of Elizabeth's uh, misdeeds coming to light in like 2017. So it is weird to watch it uh, reenacted, but Amanda Seyfried is amazing as always. And her performance in this show is something we don't really get to see out of her that often. And I think it's really cool. Hey, hashtag Mason here. And I have been obsessed with the show Severance on Apple TV Plus. This show stars Adam Scott, and it's about a company that separates your memory between your personal life and your work life. This show is so scary, so confusing, uh, so fun, so funny. It's kind of like a really long episode of Black Mirror, and you will find yourself absolutely screaming at your TV, trying to figure out what's happening and telling the characters to do what you think is right. I highly recommend it, and with this and Ted Lasso, I'm ready to crown Apple TV Plus as the world's greatest streaming service. All right, Krista, I know we both wish we were at Coachella this weekend, and I've been dying to talk to you about the outfits this year, so what were some of your favorites? All right, I have to start off strong. We have to go with my man, Conan Gray. He was in an all pink, hot pink outfit that was customly made for him. Did you wow. know that? Uh, it's a Valentino look, specifically uh, designed by Pierre Paolo Piccoli, and it's an homage to the designer's fall 2022 runway wow. show. And you know, Conan Gray, he's just such a big personality. He always goes above and beyond out of the box with his looks. And it's just so refreshing to see that he's willing to take those steps and you know, really make a statement in the fashion industry. Um, other than Conan Gray though, I have to say my other favorite look had to be Storm Reed, who plays um, Gia in Euphoria, Zendaya's younger sister. Love her. <laughs> I wanna ask you a question. Okay. How much do you think her first day outfit cost? This, this top, this yep. pants? Maybe a few hundred dollars. Um, try $4,327 for the entire outfit. 
Yeah, I think I was a little off. Uh, <laughs> just, just, so, just a little. Um, specifically, the top that she had was $2,440. That can pay a lot of people's rent. And, um, you know, when it comes to her second day outfit too, I'm just a sucker for matching sets. I love it so much and they're just so comfy and I love the t take she took on it with like the retro 70s. So it was really refreshing to see how she went from her first day compared to her second day throughout the entire event. But I would love to know your fashion icons for the Coachella. All right, so I have to pick a uh, legendary Coachella icon, Vanessa Hudgens, of who course. we all know and love, High School Musical, <laughs> Tick Tick Boom. I've always been obsessed with her and always been excited to see what her looks are gonna be year after year. She's always gone with that kind of bohemian style and I feel like she follows that every year, but she also has a twist on it. Uh, this year she had some crochet outfits, she had a lot of flowy outfits going on. We'll talk about later, a lot of people went comfy to Coachella this year, mm. and I feel like she did that, but in a stylish way, and she's always coming with those fashionable looks. Uh, her pink outfit over here was actually an homage to Mariah Carey's Heartbreaker music really? video back in the 90s, which I had no idea until I, I researched that, so I thought that was really cool. I think a lot of people are going for that nostalgic kind of feel this year, and obviously her outfits were like so freeing, so beautiful, she looked amazing. 100%, I agree. And again, I can't pick just one, so going a little bit younger in the crowd, Emma Chamberlain had to have been some of my favorite outfits. As you can see here, it's quite a different progression uh, from day one to day three. Uh, obviously, in the first day, she went really bold with this one piece here, the metallic. Also, as we saw in Storm Breed, those metallic mm -hmm. pants, that was a big trend this year. But I absolutely loved her red matching set. Uh, it was thought it was very unique and a lot of people are calling her the new Vanessa Hudgens of Coachella Which is a huge compliment for her. She's always very fashion forward So I was really excited to see her looks and then as you can see on the third day She had a more comfy look you could call it uh, with the sweatpants her insta caption for that day was no I am done, which I just thought was funny um, and I Fair. feel like she kind of <laughs> Just on the last day, was like, I'm just going comfortable. So I thought it was really cool, and I thought she had a big variety of outfits too, and I'm obsessed with her, so I was I was excited to see her outfits. No, yeah, I, I love how a lot of celebrities and influencers decide to go comfy because yeah. it gets really hot out there. So they deserve to be able to relax a little bit and not have to impress the media as much. Yeah. So now that we've talked a little about some fashion, we know there was a huge lineup of artists this year at Coachella, a lot of big names. Who do you wish you could have seen? It has my favorite person in the entire world is Billie Eilish. I she's As such an incredible singer. <laughs> she's such a powerhouse in the music industry. For only being 20 years old, you know, she came into the spotlight when she was 13 years old with Ocean Eyes, mm -hmm. and now she's 20 and she's headlining Coachella. As she should. <laughs> um, she performed some of her most popular songs, such as Happier Than Ever, I Don't Wanna Be You Anymore, When the Party's Over, and Your Power. And I felt so bad for her because at the, during her performance, she said, I'm sorry, I'm not Beyonce. Really? Isn't that insane? But I would love to know your uh, pick for your... Yeah, I mean, I totally would have loved to see Billie as well. And she deserves all the validation in the world. She's amazing. But personally, I would have loved to see Harry Styles. He had a surprise guest of Shania Twain, which everyone was super excited to see. Country pop icon, again with that nostalgia. I just love seeing their relationship. They gushed about each other in interviews and it was very wholesome at the end of their set. Uh, Harry was saying that Shania was one of his idols growing up and he taught her, he, she taught him how to sing, which I just thought was really sweet. And he's just born to perform. So it was really awesome to see them together and perform some of her old hits as well as his new hits together. All right, well, that's all we have for our Coachella reviews today. We're gonna move on to our celebrity celebrations. Today we celebrate critically acclaimed film director Edgar Wright's 49th birthday. If you haven't seen his movies, definitely check those out after our show today. Some of my personal favorites are Baby Driver and Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Hope you've living it up today. And happy 43rd birthday to Kourtney Kardashian. The model and reality star is known for being part of the Kardashian-Jenner family, having previously started in Keeping Up with the Kardashians to keep up to date with all their latest family drama. Be sure to head over to Hulu to watch their new show, The Kardashians. We wish we didn't have to go, but that's all we have this week on Hashtag That. Make sure to follow us on all our social media accounts and download the Q30 app on the App Store to stay up to date. I'm Krista's roommate. And I'm Bella's roommate. From the producers, talent, and everyone working hard behind the scenes, thank you for watching. We will see you again next week.